Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video. Today's video is featuring lots of products from my favorite things. I'm using the unicorn set, um, the over the rainbow set, the balloon stencil, uh, the cloud stencil, and then I think the other one's just a happy birthday set. Um, and so we're just going to get right into the technique. This is Miss Caitlin's birthday card. And I wanted to create a shaker, but I didn't have a die. And so here we are. So I'm using this balloon stencil as my guide. Um, mine are sticky on the back because I use repositionable adhesive. So I laid that down. I traced it with a pencil. And now I'm going to cut it out to create my shaker. I wanted a shaker that I could also see all the way through. So there's a couple of things going on here. So I have just like a little piece of foam that I can do my cutting on and I'm using my Tim Holtz, it's kind of like the X-Acto knife to cut an X in the middle. This is going to make sure that I can cut out the center without cutting the edges of it to like get into it. So first things first, in order to make sure that you're not pulling on any of your paper and it's not tearing, I don't take the X all the way to the edge. I do that part with my scissors, and even then I leave myself a little bit of a buffer, like a trim area. Before I completely cut it out, I'm going to remove the majority of the inside. I know it's hard to see because that pencil line is really light, but I'm not taking it all the way up to the pencil line. I'm leaving myself, like I said, that little buffer margin around um, so that I'm not going to have the paper that's like pulling or tugging on where I'm cutting. In order to get a smoother cut, I like to do it kind of like a spiral. So I just start cutting on an angle towards the line. And then once I get to the line, I move the paper with my left hand, hold my scissors straight with my right hand because I am right hand dominant. I would recommend doing this with a large um, stencil. Like if you're going to do it, make sure it's pretty big because if it's small and you're trying to cut it out, it's going to be more challenging. Um, Alternatively, you could just use like a uh, cutting mat and do the entire thing with the X-Acto knife, but I find that I get a much smoother cut if I cut it with my actual scissors. So I'm just going in, trimming this out. Don't feel like you can't come from another angle if you need to. For the left-hand side of the little, um, the end of the balloon, I did have to come into it. Instead of going right to left, I had to go left to right so I could get a good cut. And then once that is done, because I want to be able to see through this card completely, I am going to create another one by just laying this one right on top of another piece. The reason I'm not using the stencil again is because I need them to match up exactly in order to be able to adhere them together later on. So here's my two pieces that you can see that they line up pretty perfectly. And we did cut it by hand. It's not a die, so it's not going to be exactly perfect, but I have a little bit of a trick later for kind of masking any yucky edges. Um, but I am going to erase the pencil. Because this is a cut out piece and there's, you know, the thinner sides on like each side of the balloon, it can be prone to bending a little bit. Um, so I would just hold it down with like with your hand as best as possible and erase fairly gently so that you're not crumpling up your paper. And I'm going to erase the pencil on both of these pieces uh, before I do my ink blending. So today, I know, I can't even believe it. Today is Miss Caitlin's first birthday. She's one years old today. I can't even. So here, I thought I was going to use prize ribbon, and then I decided I was going to swap it out for peacock feathers for more of a teal. That matches her party decorations a bit better. Um, and then I'm just going to start from the top with the pink. This is picked raspberry to wilted violet to salty ocean to the peacock feathers. And I'm going to do the same on both pieces. Um, so yeah, she's one. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it went by so fast. Um, but we're super excited for her party. We're having her party tomorrow. So today is like the prep baking day. Um, normally it's the prep baking and cleaning day. Um, like usually we both take off work the Friday before to kind of do everything that we need to do. And mostly what ends up happening is that I end up baking, cooking all day and Eric ends up cleaning all day. Um, which can be a lot for both of us. So this year he actually suggested like maybe we could find somebody to come um, do like to come do like a one-time cleaning. 
So that is what we did. And I have to tell you, it was fantastic. It wasn't fantastic to start because we had a little bit of trouble. So first of all, we had trouble, you know, these people do this for a living. And so they have a schedule that they keep. So we were trying to find somebody who could fit us in. We had one lady who came out and looked at the house, you know, and I get it. It's hard to give a quote like sight unseen. So she came out to look at the house and um, like on our mantle, which I assume is most people's houses. So this is a little confusing to me, but maybe you do this for a living and you can explain it to me. Um, like on my mantle, I have like decor, like family pictures, but also like um, a mason jar of flowers. We have a sign up there. I think the one that's up there right now is, um, like, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Okay, so back to the card. So now those are both done. Here, I need to create a flap to create an actual open fold card. So this is a six inch by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. I have scored it at a half inch on the one side. And I'm going to fold that towards the inside of the card. And then I'm going to score it with my bone folder. I need this to, you'll see here in a second, I'll show you, to trap in between the two layers that we just did with the, well, once we add the acetate, so that my shaker bits will be completely contained. It will be a card that opens and closes, um, but you will still be able to see through it into the inside, which is what I wanted. So it will work like this. And everything will be, you know, concealed in there and look very nice. You won't be able to see all the adhesive. Um, but now we're going to do the inside. And of course, this cloud stencil. I mean, stop it. How many times have you seen me use this? I love this cloud stencil so much. So using the same colors that I used on the outside, starting at the top with the pink all the way down through the teal, I'm just going to be adding some clouds just by um, rotating the stencil as I move down so that it's not the same cloud every time. That is the benefit of the cloud stencil, and I think it's beautiful, and the clouds look really fluffy and layered, and I like that look. So that's what I've got going on there. Um, but anyway, so like she, I don't know what's going on with the camera here. I apologize. I think that's the only time that it did it, but it totally got fuzzy. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure what happened. Uh, so she came out, looked at the house, and she was like, yeah, if you want me to dust your mantle, like, you'll have to move all of that stuff. And I'm like, but if I move all of the stuff off of the mantle, I might as well just dust it myself, because all that's left is to just wipe it off. So I was a little bit confused. So he was like, yeah, we're not. And then I think she quoted us, what'd she quote us? Like, 350 Something like that? Uh, to to do the house and it's not it wasn't the whole house it was just the downstairs um the half bath and so our downstairs is a kitchen eating kitchen family room front room foyer and dining room um and then the half bath did i say that i can't remember so that was the the quote and i was like okay well if i have to move all of my own items back to the card here this the paper I just wasn't holding enough of it down at the bottom so I needed to tape it down thankfully I had a long piece that was just a scrap that was laying on my desk this is why us crafters never throw anything away that I could just grab and just kind of lay over the top of it to my glass mat um and that worked out just fine that one little corner that I didn't have anything going on I just added a little bit more teal and then that is the background look how fluffy those clouds are I totally love them they're my favorite so now this is what it will look like from the outside, obviously with the shaker bits and decorations. Um, but when I'm making something that's a little bit different, I always like lay it out repeatedly. Here, you, I mean, this is for my own child. So of course I'm going to add the shimmers and the glitters. I am adding perfect pearls. I just had a little bit left like in my tray. Somebody asked me where I got this tray from. And honestly, I don't know. It came in a watercolor set. But then the Perfect Pearls is more of like a white shimmer. The Hero Arts Iridescent Spray is more of a pink shimmer. So I wanted both of them. All the shimmers for my girl. Nothing's too good. Um, so I did that. And then I'm going to set these aside. And we're going to work on our coloring. You may remember this set. I made a card a few months ago um, with this unicorn set. And that is the theme of her party. That's why I chose to use the unicorns again. 
but the rainbow i wanted a little bit bigger of a rainbow the rainbow in the unicorn set is a little bit on the smaller side um and so i wanted one that was fairly large on the front of the card and that's why i chose to bring in the over the rainbow set so i'm stamping these in black this is intensified black ink from hero arts which is safe to use with copic markers and that is what i'm going to be using to color them um like I said, I did a card, uh, I did actually a flat shaker with this the first time that I did it. I don't know why these unicorns make me feel like I want to make a shaker card, but they do. Uh, and I I wanted to make her a shaker because I thought, you know, she's one and it's an interactive element and it's not anything she really has to do a ton with and she won't be able to damage it. Um, you know, it's like the shaker, she won't be able to get them out of there. So I thought it would be something fun that would be good, you know, cute for her to play with. And so that's that's how we got where we are. The um so anyway, so I started looking to see if I could find anything for the um cleaning lady, and there was a girl who had posted in one of the mom groups I'm in on Facebook, and she um said that she had an opening. So I sent her a message after I looked at her profile. I mean, honestly, I think we all kind of vet, you know, if I'm going to invite somebody into my house. And I saw that she actually had was cleaning for another couple that I knew. So I was like, well, that's probably pretty safe. And so I sent her a message. And her quote was $100. And I was like, $100? That's it? And I added two extra bathrooms when I sent her the quote. Like, I added... um the bathroom, like our master bathroom, and then the regular Nathan's bathroom. And she said $100. I was like, she's out of her mind. So they came, they cleaned, they did an amazing job. Um, so obviously we paid them more than what they were asking for because they certainly had earned it. But now that like frees up our whole Friday for me to just do like the cooking and the baking for the party tomorrow. And, like, we don't even have to worry about it. Our house is, like, sparkly clean. Ah, oh, amazing. Best purchase ever. Um, super excited. So, after <laughs> I was looking at, I mean, I think probably all parents do this. Like, you kind of look back on photos of your little ones. And um, so I was looking through her photos and videos and stuff and just how much she's changed and accomplished and her sweet little personality and so I decided for her birthday post, normally with Peanut, like I post pictures, um, but that like when he was younger, reels weren't really a thing. So I decided I was going to put together some of her videos and it's got like this sweet little song with it. Um, and I totally cried the whole time I was making <laughs> I totally cried the whole time I was making it. And so I... Um, originally was going to put it at the end of this video so that you guys could see it but YouTube's real weird about videos with kids in it and like in a good way I would totally have them rather be really strict with the rules uh, than really free with them especially when it comes to children so but if you want to see the video I will link in the description below um, to my Instagram you don't have to have an Instagram to use it to, to view it uh, if you have the direct link, you can just click on it on your laptop or tablet or, you know, what an iPad, whatever you're watching on, and be able to um, see it. So I will link that below. So you can see her um, kind of grow up over the last year. It makes me, like, it makes me sad. I mean, I'm happy that my baby is healthy and she's growing and she's achieving these milestones. But it makes me sad because she's my last baby. Like, she's, she's the last one, and it just, you know, it's sad. Anyway, we're going to move on before I start. Before I start crying in the middle of this voiceover, nobody appreciates that. Um, so, anyway, we are very excited for her little unicorn party. Eric was teasing me, and he's like, you're really sticking with this unicorn theme, huh? And I was like, yeah, because I bought, like, unicorn sparkle ice cream, and I bought unicorn, like, the magic shell that goes on ice cream as the unicorn theme. Um, I got her a little uh, onesie. I'll, I'll share those pictures for sure. I got her a little onesie um, that's a unicorn that says, I'm one, and it has a little matching tutu. 
I really, I don't expect her to wear the tutu through the entirety of the party. I really bought it for like her one year photo shoot, um, like with our regular photographer. But I think she'll be perfectly adorable. And then Eric very sweetly, I didn't think he would want to wear them, so I wasn't going to do it. But for Nathan's first birthday, his theme was dinosaurs. And so I had t-shirts that um, said like Mommy Saurus Rex and Daddy Saurus Rex. And so I didn't really think Eric would be into wearing unicorns. My ex-husband kind of had it a little bit easier because he had a boy. But um, Eric was like, no, I found these. I found these little um, t-shirts and they all match. And so he ordered them himself and they're very cute. So we will have little matching um me, him, and Nathan will have matching t-shirts. Um, and then she'll have her little onesie with the tutu. So cute. So I colored these rainbow colors um, because rainbow, I mean, it's a unicorn. They have, must have rainbow manes, right? At least my unicorns. So the colors that I picked all pretty much ended in something close to a two, either a two or a three, so that they would blend together. When you're blending colors together, um, that last number is the one that matters on whether or not they'll blend because it's kind of like their saturation or intensity. So all of these ended in two, except for the teal, I think it ended in three, which is close enough. For this rainbow, I wanted all of the colors to be included, but I only have four lines. So the second, the first and second line I'm kind of mixing that purple right into the middle of it between the pink and the blue so that all of them will be represented um, with only those four lines. And so I'm just kind of, you can see here, I'm just going back over it with the purple to blend that in. And then um, I'll just fill in the blue, green, and the yellow. I think it's, I think it's good enough. I think it makes sense with those and, and all the colors are represented. So... Um, once that's done, like, I literally had no dyes for any of this card. None of it. Not a single bit of it. I don't have dyes for these images. Um, in hindsight, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, because I before I did this for a living, I had to make do with what I had. And so I'm very understanding about that. And in this case, I would... My Favorite Things has a balloon dye. I would have bought it to make this card. But I didn't have time for it to get here before I needed the card made. And so that is how we got to this video where we're at. If you want to do something similar, but with a die, so you don't have to do all the tracing and cutting out and all of that, I will link that die. They have a balloon stacks die that works. Um, they also have a balloon uh, shaker die that is made for this that comes with um, or that you can also purchase uh, balloon shaker pouches to make it like really easy. Uh, but I didn't have any of that. So I'm just, I'm making it with what I got so that I can have a card that I'm happy with to give to my little jelly bean. So now I've trimmed these all out. I am going around the edge with a black marker. You can do what I'm doing and put it down on the paper, or you can hold it in your hand, put your coloring facing away from you, and then use the edge of the marker to go around the edges. You want a water-based marker, not an alcohol marker. An alcohol marker will bleed into your other coloring and ruin it. So make sure you're using something water-based. The one that I have is a Memento uh, Tuxedo Black marker, and that works for me. Um, and I've used it for years and had no issues. Once this portion is done, then we will get to the building of the actual shaker. But I have to have my decorations done before I can build the shaker up. You know what I'm saying? So now at this point, I'm using, you can use whatever kind of sticky tape that you have. The one that I have here is from Altenew, um, but there's a bunch of other tapes on the market, like the red line tape, or um, I think scrapbook.com has one. So just whatever you have. I found a dry adhesive um, works better with shaker cards, but I have used liquid too. I'm not going to pretend like I haven't. I definitely have. Um, so you can, you know, use whatever, use whatever you have. That's the theme of this video. Use what you got. Um, so I'm going to cover this piece 
completely in the tape and then go through and remove it. The acetate sheets I'm using are from Hero Arts and they're actually cut to be six by five. So they are a little bit um, bigger. You could cut them down beforehand and make them an A2 size card, but I wanted them to go edge to edge. So I did not cut mine down before. I'm gonna remove all of the um, protective backing for the adhesive and then I'm going to lay my acetate down right on top of that adhesive and then I will use my scissors to trim off the edge um, so that it, it does go edge to edge. I didn't want to risk any portion of this coming out since I'm going to be willing to let my daughter play with it. Um, so here just trimming this down and then the second part of the acetate we're going to do just a little bit differently. So here that's trimmed off and now I'm going to take that flap that we talked about because I need to sandwich these pieces in between. So I'm going to put some dry adhesive on the top fold which is going to be the top portion of my card and then I'm going to take my acetate piece, the piece that has the acetate in it. And I'm going to adhere that right on top of the section that's folded over to create that fold. So at this point, you could stop here if you don't want a shaker and you just wanted a window card that was top folding. You could stop here because that's exactly what you'd have. You'd have a, a balloon um, shape on the outside and you can do any shape, uh, but then you would be able to see so like a clear window card. But since I wanted it to be a shaker, I'm going to take the same adhesive. I'm going to cover the inside portion of this. And then I'm going to add my shaker bits. So I have, you have to remember when you're like, since there's no bulk here, there's no foam, you want to use smaller um, shaker bits because they're not going to shake around as much, which I kind of like, honestly. Uh, I have a hard time when all the shaker bits uh, fall to the bottom and you can't really see them because of your decorations. So here I've got them pretty well in the center and they're just smaller sequins, some iridescent ones, some clear ones, some white ones because, um, you know, I've got a lot of color going on in the card so I didn't want it to get real confusing in the middle there. So now I'm going to go through and remove all of the adhesive again and then I will lay my second piece of acetate down on top of this and smush it down so it's nice and sealed. And then again, I will trim off my excess. The piece that I'm going to, the other piece there, I knew that there would be a little bit of a separation. And so that is why I added the color to it. And then the back's just white. In hindsight, if you wanted the color to continue, you could add the color to both the back and the front. I just didn't want you to be able to see this white edge um, in the gap in between them. So again, adhesive all over everything, everywhere. Um, and I know some people just rip this. I wasn't having very good luck eyeballing where I needed it to stop. And so that's why I was using my scissors. Uh, but so now here, pulling off the release paper, and I started to do it this way, and I realized that I would probably be better off setting it on top of it so I could get that balloon lined up, and so that is what I'm doing, and then I have one piece of colored cardstock that we ink, you know, ink blended cardstock, two pieces of acetate, the shaker's trap between, and then a cover piece on the back. For the inside of the card, because you can't see it on the outside, I am going to stamp this large happy birthday. I think it's super cute. Um, I have used the stamp in the past and I will use it again in the future. The eye for this one is supposed to be a candle, but for this particular card, I skipped the flame. I did use the eye, like the candle eye to fill that in, but I just left it in black because I'm going to use that second unicorn we colored to put right in that little open section between the happy and the birthday to the top left there. And then it will still give us um, somewhere to 
sign the card, like address it to her at the top, which will be hidden, and then sign it at the bottom, which will be hidden. Um, and you'll just see this section, this, you know, kind of decorated section in the middle. Um, fussy cutting this one out was not super fun. I'm not going to pretend like it was. So I would use, had I had the die, I would have used it. That's just me being transparent. So now that's glued down, really liking the way that that is looking. And like when you put it all together, you can see a little bit of that happy birthday, a little bit of that unicorn. Mostly it's the shaker parts. And now we'll just be decorating the outside. This is that large rainbow. I'm going to put that there. I knew that I was probably going to put my sentiment kind of down into the left. So I put my decorations kind of um, up into the right. And I'll put my other unicorn. I mean, these little unicorns are so cute. The whole theme of the party is adorable. Um, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for a girl party. Not that I don't love my son. I do. And he, boy things are also very adorable when they're baby babies. But it's been a long time since I've had a baby baby party. And I've never got to have a girl one. So mama's pretty excited. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not. Here, this is my sentiment for the top, and it just says, wishing you a day as unique and special as you, which I believe that my little jelly bean is. And then I just stamped it on white because I'm going to ink blend it to match the front of the card. So I'm trimming it down into a label, and then I will add um, some more peacock feathers uh, to that just to blend it in a little bit more. Um, I didn't do the top. I just did the bottom. I'm fine if it show, you know what I mean, if there's a little bit of separation, but the stark white I wasn't really loving. So I'm again going to glue that down flat. My intention was not to make it a huge bulky card. That's why I chose to do the shaker the way that I did. Um, and then I'll just finish gluing down my little unicorn tail and stuff. Some of it kind of overhung the sentiment. I did add a few little gems. These are actually from Honey Bee, and they're from the Winter Wonder set. And they're like a light blue with like a pinkish purple shine. They're super pretty. I really like these ones. Well, this whole set is like blue and white, which is totally my vibe. Um, and then, you know, there's never enough glitter. So we're going to add some more glitter to the rainbow and the unicorns. And then here's what I was talking about when I said masking my imperfect cutting. Now that I have it all together, I'm going to go in with some Stardust stickles, and these color stickles take on the color of whatever's behind them, and I'm going to use this to outline my window, and that is going to kind of mask any of the irregular cuts that I might have. If you wanted, you could also use the same black marker trick, but I didn't want something so dark. And so that's why I chose to use the Stardust stickles, but you could use any color stickles and it would completely cover it. So that is it. That's the whole card. I hope that you guys learned a little something. Um, like I said, if you want to see her one year video, I will link it below as well as all the supplies. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.